I think it's uh, 5.30. And my lighting is in the mess. I'll be right back. So hopefully you guys are um, hopping on soon. I'm just gonna go turn on my other light. Get a little bit more light in here, hopefully. So I am actually still currently setting up. <laughs> and still in my brain trying to think of how I'm gonna do all this. But we will we will just go with the flow. And then actually I wanted Ava to be here to, to do some of these things with me, but she is down for a nap. Everyone's napping right now. So it's just gonna be me. <laughs> Until she wakes up, I guess. Okay. So, I like totally forget what I wrote on my thing. <clears throat> okay, yes, so like and share, uh, share the live, and then come back and, um, oh, and like, like the live, and then come back and comment the like and share. Mom is on, um, I think she's still at the office. She's going to be um, keeping track and checking and then she will do uh, the drawing from, from the office so that I can um, mainly focus on doing all the cooking. But thank you for joining. We're in my home today because I, like I said, I wanted to do some of these things with Ava, but she's taking a nap. And um, so we are just gonna do this with myself. <laughs> So there's a lot of things um, that I wanted to do and I was really lazy. I was up at three o'clock trying to think of what we were gonna do today. Um, I didn't really, I, I feel like uh, my sweet tooth is coming out. I still like savory things, but my sweet tooth is coming out again, like how it was with Ava uh, when I was pregnant with Ava. I'm not really a sweet, um, sweet lover, but uh, when pregnant, I am definitely liking sweets a, li a lot more. Um, I think it's a, th a third trimester kind of thing. <laughs> so um, my sister, Katrina, when I was pregnant with Ava, um, she used to make these cookies. These cookies for me, I, this is when I was still living at uh, my mom's house because um, Christopher was in Kona side. Um, so she would bake these cookies. These are gluten-free Betty Crocker chocolate chip gluten-free cookies um, for me like almost every night. Um, so I blame her for getting a little bit bigger towards the end <laughs> because it was these cookies, I think. <laughs> um, so I, uh, this time she handed me the box. She handed me the box and didn't make the cookies. She wanted me to make the cookies myself. I was like, I want the cookies made already. But I figured I would um, show off our cookie sheets, how wonderful our cookie sheets um, tonight and do the cookies. So I already mixed it, follow the box. Guys, if you know me, I am not really a baker. I don't really, I don't like baking. Um, I like when it's simple like this. I've learned that baking, once you, like you really have to measure, once you bake it, you can't fix it. Not like how with cooking. I feel like cooking is a little bit more forgiving. Um, and you can kind of add a little bit more of like salt or something like that to it. Whereas baking, if you mess up, you mess up. So I do like baking if I can follow, if it's easy, one, and if I can just follow the box. So I'm not doing anything from scratch when it comes to baking cookies here. 
Um, sometimes I'll do it for like sugar cookies and stuff, easy kind, but we're definitely doing this box. So um, this, this cookies call for one stick of butter, one tablespoon of water, one teaspoon vanilla, and then one egg. I followed the box. Um, I did not substitute anything because um, I'm pretty sure my sister never substituted anything and I want to make it exactly the same. Um, these come out super, super crispy, which I like my, my cookies crispy. I don't like them gooey. So here is our cookie sheets that I'm going to be using tonight. I have two at my house. And the reason why I chose to do it at my house also, other than the fact that I wanted Ava to help me um, bake tonight, um, was that at, at the office, we do not have a stove, an, uh, um, an oven. So uh, I, we never can really showcase our cookie sheets. So what better way to showcase these when I'm at home and I'm able to stick them into our oven, I mean my oven. Um, they're very, very wonderful. Um, you are, you can do cookies and I've baked cookies at the office. You can do them in um, your electric skillet but who only wants to eat like three cookies? Three, I think you can fit maybe like five max, um, five small cookies, but I'm not on the diet guys. We, we can eat more than five little cookies. So um, when I bake cookies, I wanna bake them all at one time uh, and not have to wait. And I do like them really, really crispy. So that's why I love baking them on our cookie sheets. So I'm gonna do that. Um, I've already pre-mixed it and I have it in our um, 3.5 quart bowl. I'm gonna, my oven just went off, so it's warm, it's preheated at 350. I'm gonna scoop that on my cookie sheets in a bit, but I just wanted to go uh, over some, some of the things that we're gonna do today. So the cookies, I'm gonna do, I'm going to do um, pumpkin puree for you guys. I have my notes here so I don't get I don't get lost because my brain is, is out there these days okay so I'm gonna do my pumpkin puree note when you are look you're at the store and getting picking pumpkins do not go for that jack-o-lantern pumpkins you want to make sure um, if you can find sugar pumpkin or pie pumpkin that is key for making your puree. I'm not sure what my mom got. Um, if my mom's on, she can write what kind of pumpkin she bought me. I didn't tell her um, exactly what pumpkin to buy, um, but I was just reading up on it. It is important, well it is not important, but it tastes a lot better if you can get pie pumpkin or sugar pumpkin. It's gonna be, a, your puree is gonna be a lot, lot tastier, okay? But she was nice to pick up me, um, pick up a pumpkin for me uh, and quarter them so that it would fit into the hopper. I'm gonna take our guard off today of our, of our salad machine here and we're gonna use our salad machine to cut our uh, pumpkins up. It normally takes about 45 to an hour to roast your pumpkin. If you uh, don't puree it like this, I mean shred it like this, and you stick it to roast inside of your oven. And that's a, a, a normal way that people tend to do it before they puree it. I'm pretty sure, oh yeah, kombucha, yeah. Uh, kombucha, 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 kombucha. Sorry, saying it weird. Um, pumpkin. My mom just wrote on the comments there. <laughs> so hi everyone. I am just kind of going over what we're gonna make tonight. Um, if you wanna go ahead and share the live and then come back and like and uh, comment, liked and shared on here, you'll be get entered into a contest. Uh, I'll let my mom know when to pull a name. She is not here with me, but she is watching from the office um, and she will do the drawing for us. So. I am gonna showcase the salad machine today. I wanted to showcase um, 
our P5 because this is my favorite tool right now to use in the kitchen. Um, I do not drink coffee. So it's kind of funny that it is my favorite tool right now, but I have been making cold brew for Christopher. Christopher is my husband. Um, for, cause he's on graveyard shift right now. So um, it's been nice to do the cold brew for him. Loving our P5, um, how it's made and everything. So I'm gonna do the coffee in this one. And it is a French press, okay? And I'll explain more when I um, go come back to it. We're gonna froth our milk today inside of our um, uh, craft. It's uh, our Salad Master coffee pot. Um, it does Armenian uh, coffee. You can do your pour for your gravy. So I have about a cup of milk in here already. You can kind of see the line because it's been, the milk's right there. Um, I just poured milk inside of it and then I'm gonna froth it. To actually do the frothing in here, you would need a frothing hat, a frothing wand. Um, you can Google that if you don't know what that is, but I do not have one. Um, you can immersion blender, so I do not have that either. You can use a regular blender, um, a mason jar to shake, shake, shake. You can use a whisk or a electric, electric whisker, a whisk. Um, so there's different ways to froth your milk. Unfortunately, my, my whisk is too big to go inside of there. So if I had that frothing wand, it would be perfect for this. So while my, my milk was warming on the stove, I could stick my wand in here. I am going to do it a different way. I'm going to be shaking it inside of my mason jar. So I'm just going to warm it up and pour it in here. But there's, there's just different ways of how to do it, okay? Um, and then I have the two tea kettles. Ooh, sorry, I have water in the mic. So this one is the whistling tea kettle. I'm gonna actually bring you guys back over there later. Um, I have the whistling and then I have the electric one. I'm gonna show you how fast both of them warm up. Super, super quick. And then I'll use the water to heat up our coffee. And then I have, um, I have my nine inch here. That I'm going to use and uh, my three quart saucepan. Um, these are just because I'm not making too much, I'm only going to be making a little bit um, because it's really only me. Um, if I wanted to, I actually probably would have used my limited four quart mini Dutch to do the caramel, but I feel like that is too big for the amount that I'm making today. So I'm going to just try to use my three quart for that. But this, we still have this limited edition in stock. Like I said, limited. It is part of the Complete Gourmet Collection. It has that 24 karat gold inlay on the knobs um, and on the handles. I don't have the handles because they're all in my drawer over there. I don't click them on until I need them. So I'm just reading the comments. <clears throat> also, I was going to shake my milk in this measuring cup because it comes with a lid, but it does not seal um, and it does leak a little. So I do not want to do that. Um, so I'll just use my mason jar, <clears throat> but these are up for sale at the shop. It does just have their salad master logo on it. I don't know if you guys can oh, see right there. Salad master logo. Um, I'm, I'm not sure the price on these. So um, if you DM me, I just got to ask my mom but we just got these in these are great for small little gifts for the holidays if you want to and, and this glass if you want to um get some of these for some friends these are a wonderful guest even our p5s are wonderful too um and then i brought out i brought out my multi-purpose pot for the caramel if you were to keep this warming kind of like a crock pot style for parties and stuff um, you could use your multi-purpose pot which is wonderful the rack for the skewers this actually comes with the mini dutch and we have some on the side um, so it fits in the four quart mini dutch that i just previously showed you 
and it does fit inside of this five quart, uh, I mean, sorry, the MP5, which means multi-purpose five quart. So it comes, so this rack is sold with these beautiful, colorful skewers. And so um, if, say you wanna make your fondue, your caramel, your hot chocolate, I'm mean, not hot chocolate, um, Oh yeah, I guess hot chocolate, melted chocolate. Um, for the holidays, you can use your multi-purpose pot, keep it on that 150, because it has that timer, um, uh, that temperature gauge, your digital probe, and then everybody, all the kids, how fun is that? You get your fruit platter, um, your cheese, your crackers, you can do anything, and then you can, little wieners, you can stab them with your skewers, and um, they all kind of just, have a little spot here, which is kind of fun for the holidays. So really, really fun. We still have some of these inside of the shop. So come on down if you don't have yours. So this is another way of doing it fun for the holidays. Just wanted to show real quick. Okay. Just gonna put this on the side because we're not gonna use this tonight. I just wanted to show you that okay let me put our cookies in so let me do our cookies real quick oh my my um my picture frame looks like it's gonna fall because i put a bigger picture frame above my oven so I gotta go take care of that after. <clears throat> okay, sorry guys. Actually, you know what? I'm going to parade. I'm gonna do our pumpkin real quick um, and stick that on top of the stove top. Um, my one quart, I, that's why I had my one quart out. I was like, what am I using my one quart for? So I am a true, a, a firm believer of having all the sizes. I love from small to big. And I know some people were just like, oh, I only cook small. Um, I only cook big and they didn't get the other sizes, but I use my smalls all the time. I have three of these, three one quarts. I have rice in my one and a half quart on this, on my table right now. Um, and then I put my leftovers, I don't believe in a microwave, so I put all my leftovers in here, but it's just perfect for smaller things, like if I just gotta do gravy, or um, just doing my two pumpkins here. I'm, you're, the thing about Salad Master is that you wanna, you wanna fill up your pot at least three-fourths way for maximum um, usage, okay? Three-fourths or more, um, as long as your lid here is gonna close. Um, and it'll create that, that vacuum, semi-vacuum cooking solution, okay? Um, but the bigger pot, say you um, only have this amount and you put it in a 10-quart pot. Okay, sorry, I was just reading something. If you put it in a 10-quart pot, all of that air in between is gonna actually make it longer to cook. So to maximize that, you wanna make sure that you get at least three fourths or fuller inside your pot. Not overfulling, but not overfull, but okay. So that's how you're gonna make Salad Master is going to cook faster for you. You're gonna save your energy, save your time. Um, medium, low, okay? And you're just gonna wait for that click. So got my 3.5 quart salad bowl. I'm just gonna do an overview of our salad machine real quick for those of new people here. If you're new, um, just do a little hand wave. Um, if you've never heard about Salad Master before, I know a lot of you on here right now are owners. Yay, yay, <laughs> owners, but. <laughs> I'm reading some of the comments, but yes. Um, so salad, the salad machine is a host reward, okay? And 
Um, there are other host rewards, and especially for this month, there's a 4.5 quart mini brazier. Um, it is a limited edition. I have it under here, but uh, I can chill it after for you guys. I just wanna get this going. Um, it does come with five different blades. We have them all here and they all kind of stack. One, two, three is gonna be your julienne, uh, four is gonna be your slice, and then five is gonna be that way twinkle cut. So there are numbers on the, the back part here. I'm actually gonna use number two tonight. And you're just gonna let it find its way. There is like these little holes on here. I'm gonna show you real quick. And there's the grooves and you're gonna just let it find when you're, you're turning forward, okay? And you don't need to over tighten. You can leave your hand in there just to make sure that it doesn't fall off and it's on, it's on there, but you don't need to crank it on there, okay? I took the, the guard off. Where did I put my guard? Oh, here it is. So this guard is plastic. Um, you do not uh, want to, if you are using the guard, you do not want to push this hard on top of your blades because the plastic will come off. But um, if you have smaller things, I do like my large olives. I stick it into the hopper here, um, cookies, my chickpeas, smaller things like that. I can use my guard and then grind away. But, oops, see, that's what happens when we, when we don't, we are messing around. Okay, because I'm doing my pumpkin and we're gonna quarter it, as long as you quarter them the width of that they'll fit in this hopper, then you'll be fine. Um, I took off my guard. Let me go stick this back on because I, um, fell off. Okay, so we're going to just hold this. Yeah, see if we can get as much as we can. My mom's actually really good at cutting pumpkin. Oh, sorry. Your silent machine, there is a suction cups on the bottom. Um, you want to make sure that they are securely onto your counter because your blades are very sharp. You do not want your silent machine to be going and moving while you're cutting, especially like something harder that's like this. And you want to push as much pressure even me and the nice thing look i just moved my thing up <laughs> um nice thing is that you don't have to peel your i'm talking about how you need to put your suction on here and my and my salad machine is just going so don't do what i just did okay guys <laughs> Okay, here we go. I think I got a little bit of green in here. So it gets pretty close and you can go until you are comfortable. But it gets close to the edge here. Actually, this made a lot of pumpkin. And as long as you're going forward, it won't cut you in the inside, okay? Um, you just kind of want to keep your hand flat like this inside there, clear it out. I think the pie pumpkin and the sugar pumpkin are a little bit softer, so you can kind of um, hold it a little, a little nicer on there, but this one will do. Okay, so we got our slices here. I am actually only just gonna do one. I hope everyone caught on to that because I don't wanna do too much just want to fill this up. Eh, maybe we can do one more. Let's nice try. Okay, yeah, I did that one a little bit better because I was holding it nicer. Um, so we got closer to our skin on that one. So as long as it's the width of your hopper, you are good to go. So I'm just sticking in my soft pan here. Save these for my compost. Lots of dishes to do. Okay, oh, and then 
If it's slippery, you want to just get a dish towel and hold firm, and then you're going to push your uh, your handle uh, forward, and you're going to hold tight, and that should actually release your your blade. They are dishwasher safe. I do stick my blades in the dishwasher sometimes. Okay, here we go. Look at our pumpkin. That was quick and fast. You can make pumpkin curry. You can do all kinds of things with using your salad machine in this pumpkins. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt. I have Himalayan salt. Some of that, close that. I'm just gonna put a little bit like a teaspoon of water. Or maybe like a tablespoon water, just a little bit, okay? It's a harder vegetable, so let's put this. Oh, I can't do that one. Sorry guys, I just put this on the stove here. And I'm just gonna do it on low, I have gas, so I'm gonna do it on low. If you had electric, start it at medium, okay? <laughs> yeah. So if you see my house, my house is decorated, um, but we are on the non-decorated side. <laughs> I was just reading someone's comment about my, my skull. I, I do like to decorate, um, and Halloween is one of my favorite holidays. Okay, look at my, my notes here I got. I'm gonna do my cookies. Put this away. Oh, and there is two parts to this. The hopper comes off the top part. You can put this, wash this one, and then just wipe down your base here. Um, if you notice, there are, it's a little, it's on the, it goes like this. So you just wanna make sure that it fits and then it'll just go in. So don't be pulling backwards, okay? Keep it on your counter and keep it in that corner right there. Because if you put that bad boy underneath, the chances of you using it is um, very little, little, little. So you want to um, make sure that you leave it on your counter so you maximize your salad machine, okay? So leave that go. Um, it should take about like uh, between 15 minutes, I think, 15, 20 minutes, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Um, another person that actually just did that, and I um, thank you, Tracy, because she was, uh, I seen her um, share the post from Derek, um, I forget their dealership in the mainland, um, mom can help me out, but I saw their video of doing the pumpkin, and I wanted to make sure that you guys knew that you guys could do that too, um, just in case you didn't see their post, uh, their cooking um, little demonstration on, on the pumpkin puree. But they did do it. I just wanted to recap what they were talking about. Okay, so I got my little cookie. I'm not gonna spray this or anything. I'm just going to do my little cookies. I'm pretty excited about these cookies. And like I said, these it's the box one, Betty Crocker. Here we go, guys. Cause I'm not a baker. Not a baker, but I do like eating cookies. Crispy cookies. Especially when pregnant. Um, we do have our mixing bowls that are on special right now too. Um, unfortunately, I don't have those mixing bowls. I only have our, I only have, let me just do this here, our uh, double wall insulated bowls. I feel like it's so quiet when I do it by myself now. I'm like, 
I'm so used to having like Estelle with me. <laughs> and we're like um, d doing jokes and stuff. So it's like so quiet. It's just so, so quiet right now. <laughs> but as I'm focusing on getting my cookies into the oven. <laughs> But at any point, if you have questions, I will try to read it. Um, my mom is actually uh, at the office right now. So just, just comment if you have any questions or need to me to recap or anything. Um, oh, I'm gonna fit all of these cookies. This batter. all this batter. <laughs> It'll be like kind of one big cookie over there. Okay. So 350. I gotta read my box guys because I am not a baker here and uh, 11 to 13 minutes. Okay. Stick this into my oven. Cookie sheets are also on special right now. So, perfect for the holidays, here we go. They have titanium in them too, so love our cookie sheets. Okay. I'm going to move my frame because I, this is from a frame from my mom. Um, for, um, I forget, I think it was Christmas or something. And it says, don't make me poison your food. So I leave it in the kitchen, <laughs> but I just put it, reframed it. And, um, the stickies are not sticking. So I'm going to take it down before it breaks. It was hand, handcrafted at a, uh, from a craft fair. I'll do 13 minutes, just in case. Okay, what is next? Can I throw this box away? One more time, guys. Gluten-free cookies, chocolate chip gluten-free cookies, Betty Crocker, mm. These were, these are the thing for me right now. Uh, right now and, and when I was pregnant with Ava. Okay, what should we do next? You should use sea salt too for that pumpkin, but I only had a Himalayan, but it's fine. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna take you guys on a journey to my stove top, cause that's where everything is. Um, I think that's where everything is. And then we can kind of watch, watch it all go down. Mm -hmm. So take me on a ride. Don't mind my dirty dishes in my oven. I mean, in my sink, in my oven. <laughs> because I didn't do dishes. And I left my husband and I thought, you know, he can't, you just can't, you know. Yeah, I know how it goes. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put you guys a little bit higher so you guys can see in. I'm going to put you down a little here so you guys can see everything oh okay oh um i will do the salad machine anti um and chris i will do the salad machine um after i finish just i I'm, I'm pretty sure i'll remember but um just because i moved over here so okay this is going um i can't unfortunately i can't turn it lower but um, I'm just gonna let it go for a little while. Um, and then if you had that little, um, that prayer, uh, the hand one, that wand, um, that would be perfect for this. Okay, so I have the whistling tea kettle here. I'm gonna turn that on and I'm gonna show you how, I'm gonna put it on, 
uh, medium low because I don't want my flame to be um, to be uh, immersing my pot. It just it's just kissing the bottom, okay? And then I have my electric skillet. I mean, like no, there's a, my electric tea kettle here, and I'm going to press that down, and I'm going to show you how fast it's going to be to warm up both of these waters, okay? And then I'll use that for my coffee over here. It's gonna be super, super, super quick. I um, have the electric one at home. I actually took the whistling tea kettle from the office, but I used to have the whistling before, um, but I gave it to my sister, Trina, for her health. Um, so I'm just borrowing my mom's one. I haven't used a whistling. The nice thing, so the whistling does have that cap on the end that makes the whistle. Um, it heats up very quickly. So sometimes this will fly off if it gets too hot. Um, but I just, I'm, I'm always kind of here watching my water. Um, I love the electric. It doesn't have that, that whistling on it, um, but it just clicks up when it's done. There is a kind of like this filter in the, in the inside that you can pop out. So if you wanted to put your loose teas directly into your tea kettle, you totally could. Um, I don't do that, but um, some people do. So if you wanna do it like that, it's totally fine. So we are gonna wait till that is, I'm actually gonna turn this off already and just let it sit. I'm gonna grab our trivet and then actually stick this on the side. Um, nice thing about our trivet is, is a, a, uh, what is that? Magnetic? <laughs> like, what is that word? Magnetic. Um, you just don't, don't, don't want to make, you want to make sure that you don't forget that it's on your pot. It kind of turns in for the smaller feature and then turns out for to make it a little bit bigger. So I got my handles. I have it all in one jar. And then I click on best feature about Salad Master, I believe, for me. Okay, I'm gonna just stick this right on there. And I'm gonna put this on my countertop. So let it's gonna continue to cook, okay? So I got my froth, my milk here. I'm just gonna warm that up. I'm gonna put it on a low. Doesn't need that much time. So you can hear that water. Oh, it's a magnet. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> my mom, my mom's correcting me. That's how you know your the cookware is or any cookware is um, induction ready. It's if 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 you put a magnet to it and it sticks. Um, induction stove should not be used by people that have pacemakers. Um, we were doing some research on it, but we don't. I mean, of course, we don't sell the induction induction stoves. Um, just in case that people have induction stoves at their home. I have gas. Um, it goes on electric. Really anything. It's all a nice thing about Salmon Master. So I'm just reading some of the comments. Okay. I don't want to do too much things because then my brain will go all over and might forget something. So, so I have my P5 here. I'm going to show. Can I just turn you guys? Oh, and turn you guys just a little bit so you guys can see me so I'm not like fully over here um, so I have my p5 here I love my p5 it's uh, 32 ounces um, and they, they teamed up Salad Master and Espro teamed up to make this to come out with this one okay and I should stick my apples in the cold so there's two filters, and these are the bigger filters for the for the coffee. Oh my goodness, my steam! I'm gonna stick my water. Can you see all that steam? So the electric one went off first. My whistling still hasn't. So the electric one actually warms up a lot quicker. Um, I do have my one on the gas stove at a medium, medium low. So I don't like raging fire, but um, we'll see how much longer it takes to whistles. 
Okay, so it just clicks on and clicks on. You need a double one for your coffee. There is a smaller attachment, which is half the size, is for your loose tees. Um, I don't really do my my tees in here, so um, I kind of keep this one just for coffee. I feel like once you start doing a lot of coffee in these things, um, especially when you do cold brew because you leave it for so long, you gotta, it has to sit on the counter for between 12 to 14. 16 hours on top of the counter that I feel like it it really smells like coffee um so I don't really like to use this one for my teas but that's just a personal preference there um I did ground up my organic French dark roast right in my little coffee blender So I'm just gonna put a little bit of coffee in there. Sorry, I, I just eyeball guys. Cause you wanna have strong coffee um, for this. I wonder if I should just do the whole thing. Okay, maybe I just do the whole thing. That was a lot. That was a lot, a lot. You don't need that much, okay? Don't, don't follow me <laughs> when it comes to this one. I did a lot of, I think that's like, like one third cup of coffee grounds, which probably isn't, or one fourth. It probably is way too much, but it's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna put my hot water. It's gonna be very, it is gonna be a strong. Um... Coffee here. Okay, okay, I got to the line. Hear some noises for our thing. Oh, you know what it is? I think it's my milk. I gotta put my milk on this side because it cannot cannot tell if it's warm or not. Okay, let that go. I'm gonna let this steep. You need to steep your coffee for at least three to uh, three to five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna let it steep before I push down. Oh, we're gonna do our pumpkin spice latte, guys, next. So, okay, we'll let that go on the side. I need my notes here. I'm gonna do it in my um, nine-inch small skillet pan here. So I need. I wonder if this is ready. I'm gonna show you the mason jar way. Cause I don't have another P5. I should have done it. I was gonna show you guys how to froth it with your, your French press. But, okay, so if you're gonna do it in your French press, if you're gonna do froth, um, you're gonna warm up your milk. You're gonna stick it into your French press and then you're going to, um, about a minute, you're gonna up and down, up and down. So it creates a lot of foam, okay? And that's how you, you can do it frothing with that one. Um, you can do it in, directly inside of your coffee pot here um, with a frothing wand. I don't have a wand, so yeah. But um, this is another way. It's not the best way to do it with a mason jar, but you can do it. Um, you warm up your milk and we're gonna stick it in here in our mason jar. It can be any size that you want. As long as it's warm. I think this is much, pretty much warm. And the handle, even though the handle's on like this and it's all the way metal, um, it's not hot. You wanna make sure that your fire is not, um, your fire is not raging over it, okay? Oh yeah, this is warm milk. Nice warm milk, okay. And then you froth away. Oh, 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 I didn't close that good, guys. I was worried about the other one and then I spilled all this one. Oh my goodness, I'm making a mess. Oh no. Okay guys, let me try to, can I not do this good? Oh, oh no. I think my mom gave me a not so great, um, not so great 
what is this thing called mason jar mom this lid does not go tight on here she's like i'm so sorry <laughs> my mom's fighting me okay you know what we're gonna do we're gonna change uh, game plan here and we're gonna just do it with the whisk Anyways, you would shake it vigorously for a minute and then that would be your froth. But we're gonna just stick it in here. I have something in my pot. My mom sets me up. My mom set me up, guys. <laughs> oh, okay, stop this. Timer. Basically, you just want it to be really foamy. And you just whisk, 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 and create a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of bubbles. So you can do it this way. And then I, I can stick it back inside here. So there, how that's how you froth the melt, okay? Thanks. <laughs> yeah. They don't seal. I just got milk everywhere. Okay, anyways, you guys get the gif of that, right? Okay. Oh, so only now my my whistle is going off. Turn that off. Um, so that wasn't as, that wasn't as, I feel like, um, as fast. Well, it wasn't as fast as the electric one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as fast as the other one, but I just wanted to show you, see, um, there is two different types of tea kettles that are on special right now and that, and that Silent Master has. Um, okay, and this is not on, okay? You want to do this when it's, when it's just warm. Yeah, yeah, you can, so you can, um, so there is a froth there's a froth wand uh, that you can purchase and it sticks directly into your um, into your coffee pot, which is really, really nice. Um, and that will, would be the best thing, but I don't have one of those and I'm not making froth and milk a lot. So I wasn't gonna go out and buy one. But I was just giving you guys ideas, um, especially if you, you don't have to buy a big machine to just do your, your, you know, your froth. Um, but just wanted to give you guys an idea. So we're going to do our, our pumpkin latte. I'm just going to use this milk guys. Sorry. Because what's that? Is that two, two cups? Let me see. Okay. about two cups? I'm just going to eyeball it. Uh, let's say that's two cups in there and um, I'm gonna save this for her something else and then we're gonna do uh, two tablespoons of pumpkin puree I know I made one but I just I'm gonna take some from the can because I didn't know how long it was gonna take and then I would have to mash it and everything and this one's already done so we are just going to use a can, just act like we just made that one and taking it from the pot. Um, and then this one's like the organic one that my mom always gets for the pumpkin pies when she does. So you want two tablespoons. Um, I'm just gonna eyeball because you could use more if you want more of that pumpkin-y um, flavor. More or less. And then we got one to three tablespoons of sugar, depending on how how sweet you want it oh by the way if you don't want to do dairy milk you can use your almond milk or any other type of milk that's non-dairy you don't have to use um dairy, uh cow milk okay um if you got two percent or whole milk it's a little bit better but i think i i don't know if this is two percent i think this might be one percent um, but it doesn't, it's not bad or anything. It's just a little bit better if you can do 2% or um, whole milk. Okay. 
Ooh, I gotta turn our fan on in here, it got hot. Okay, so I'm just gonna do two of cane sugar, because I think Christopher likes sweet. This is for Christopher, because I don't drink coffee. I have cane sugar, so I'm gonna stick that in there and just put two tablespoons of that, one tablespoon of vanilla. I'm just gonna put a little bit, I'm just, highball. I'm just putting a little bit, I'm not even gonna put a tablespoon. Um, this is organic vanilla extract. And I'm gonna stick this on low. My mom said about the whistling tea kettle, I should have turned it higher. So it would have warmed, but, um, but, uh, but I do still feel like the, with the electric one is pretty quick. Okay. So just intermission, if you would like to share the live right now and then come back and comment, like, and share, you can do that. And then you get put into an end, into a drawing. My mom is at the office and she will pull a winner for you guys. So, and then if you're new here and the um, first time to our cooking class, definitely um, wave your hand or say hello and just let us know. Um, I know we had a few new people that were joining tonight. It's not always this crazy. I guess it's not that crazy, but sometimes I'm doing it with other people. But tonight I was gonna do it with my daughter, but she went to bed, she took a nap kind of late too. I'm just gonna stir this with my spoon. Ooh. Okay, because this was already warm, so I'm actually just going to put it on low. I'm going to add my half a teaspoon of pumpkin spice. Or more, you don't have to, you can just eyeball this one, guys, because I mean. It doesn't like pumpkin spice, so it's more it's more for your tasting. So add that in. You can put some for on your whipping cream on the top. Ooh, that looks good. I think I would just drink it like this because I don't like coffee, but I do our latte. So I wanna say that was three minutes, huh? We'll push this down. Can you guys see me all the way over here? I'm just gonna push down. I kind of made a lot of coffee, so this is like really um this is really full. I need more muscles. <laughs> This week goodness <laughs> okay so I need a half a cup of very very strong coffee where's my half a cup oh my gosh this is gonna be oh you can do your cold brew in here too um, I, I really prefer cold brew um, I just wanted to do the hot one for so you guys could see Ooh. Because okay, everything's really hot. So I think that actually, is, I'm gonna turn that off. That smells really good. Okay guys, I wanna try this. I think it needs more sweetener, but that's me. Um, this is for my husband, so I'm going to just stick it back. Actually, I'm gonna stick it in my coffee pot here so he can pour out into his cup, but it should be too. And then you can put your whipping cream and then put make it a little fancy and put some um, pumpkin spice right on top. I think it tastes pretty good actually. And if you wanted to add more coffee in it, it doesn't, you can't taste the coffee. I can really taste the pumpkin in it. Um, so depending on how much you want to pump or want that taste of pumpkin, that's how much you're going to want to add into it. Okay. 
I wonder if this is gonna fit in here, I think so. Oh, guys, I don't click my handles on, but you can click your handles on. It's, it would be easier to pour. Don't be like me, no, don't do it. click off when I stick it in the wash in the dish. Um, I don't like to wash my handles. doesn't get dirty. And then here is our pumpkin spice latte. It was super easy. If you were here, the smell of this was like great. I'm just going to stick that onto our um, as to our Uh, island there. Okay, next we're gonna do our caramel. Gonna move everything off the on the side here. Unplug the, my whistle. I mean my electric kettle. Stick my thing back in there. I can hear Ava going at it. Oh, can you? Oh, gonna move this here. I wanna go here so you guys can see a little bit better, huh? of my uh, caramel. Okay, so there's two different types of ways to do this. Oh my goodness, where is my... Oh, I forgot my heavy whipping cream. I'll be right back. Oh my goodness, I, if I didn't use this, I, it would have sat out all night. I totally forgot about it. Okay, so this is an easy way of making caramel. Um, I found this other way, but it calls for a light corn syrup, and I don't use corn syrup. So I'm just going to do it the easy way. One cup of sugar. Um, if you have brown sugar... It, because it's a little bit softer, it would be better. Okay, I have rice in my sugar because Ava was playing with my sugar and put the rice inside of the sugar. So sometimes like when I'm pouring it out, I see rice uh, that's in my sugar here. You could actually do this in your three, in your nine inch too, because it probably would be a little bit better, but we do that. Oh my goodness, my cookies. Thank you, Valerie. Oh my goodness. They're actually really good. I'm just going to leave them in there. Um, and then they should be perfect once I take them out. Thanks for like remind, remembering about that cookies because I totally forgot about that. See with my brain, that's why I need all of you guys to help me. So if you have brown sugar, you can use brown sugar. I only have cane sugar at my house. Use cane sugar. Oh no, 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 the rice is not supposed to be in the sugar. It's just that she went, got into the rice and the sugar and she was playing with it. And she, yeah, so there's rice in my sugar, so. It's just a thing. Okay, so we're just gonna turn this on. You wanna do it at a low and you're gonna keep whisking until they, it kind of, your, all your sugar melts. You can also use white sugar. For this, we are doing um, our cane sugar, like I said. Let me just rinse this. I'm looking at all the mess that I'm making too and it's driving me crazy, but it's okay. Yeah, so she does, she hides in the, in the pantry and, she, and um, because I have these OXO um, containers that you can, you can pop up when she likes to sit there. And so I had to move the sugar up into the top cover because she will sit there and she'll open all these up and she'll play with them. So 
the rice got into the sugar and it was just this big thing. It was just not, it wasn't a fun thing. Okay. Oh, see, look, I found another rice. So you want to have a good saucepan to do this. Oh, I have more rice. So if you see me doing this, it's because I'm picking out the rice. My oven is off already. I just left the cookies inside. No one wants, so I, I eat toast. Um, I eat cinnamon sugar toast, okay? Yeah, and, um, and, and I didn't realize that there was so much rice in the sugar that I'm eating my, my toast and I'm like, why is it so crunchy? I was eating all the raw rice that was in my sugar. It wasn't fun, you guys. <laughs> Okay, I think I got them all. Oh, I saw one more. So I didn't put anything, I just put my one cup of sugar. I actually should do a double recipe of this. Let me add one more cup of sugar. Hope I don't get any more rice. Oh, I see rice already. Okay, it's a good thing it's just for me and not for other people. Okay, so if you can see, I don't know if you guys can see inside of here, um, you're just gonna kinda wanna mix it until all, and it's gonna get clumpy, okay? Yeah, I don't have a, a, a sifter. <laughs> I know what kind of household am I living in? <laughs> okay, next you want to get your butter out. It's I left my butter from this morning. You want to make sure that it's room, um, room temperature. Can you guys see this? I wanna just kind of whoop you down here so you guys can see it's just clumping. You just, you, this is perfect. You wanna make sure that it, you want it to completely melt, but it'll clump like this first, okay? And you wanna keep it at a, I have gas, so medium low. Um, oh, there I see a rice already. Oh, can I get a, okay, I'll put you guys back up and get a spoon to do that because I don't wanna burn my hand. So keep it at a temperature. Um, the other thing is if you have, if you have the candy uh, temperature gauge thingy, I don't know what it's called. Um, I don't have one of those. You wanna make sure that your caramel um, is kept at, I forgot what she said, 235 degrees Fahrenheit or 240. And that's perfect for doing your Guys, no wonder why I don't like doing this kind of stuff. It is hot standing over the stove like this. I'm continuously, I'm continuously, um, continuously stirring. Like, I don't do that kind of stuff. I just like to troll and leave. Oh my gosh, I see so much rice. <laughs> it's not gonna cook though, <laughs> don't worry. I can hear Ava, um, she is definitely up right now. Okay, 
So this process is gonna take a little while. Um, so just bear with me because we need to get that going. And if you see me with a spoon, that's because it's driving me nuts that I have rice all in my thing here. Really driving me nuts. What can you do? So grab a spoon and pick them out. It's a good thing you guys know me and you guys love me, right? <laughs> So brown sugar, cane sugar, um, brown sugar, yeah, yeah. I'm using cane sugar though, because that's all I have in my house, so that's what we get. And the reason why you want to continuously stir this is because you don't want your, um, you don't want your sugar to get burn a burn okay don't want your sugar to burn i'm just picking all this this out so once it completely melts which is almost melted all the way you're going to turn this bad boy off and it's almost there i'm going to actually turn to a low salad master is pretty quick about Ava in a second. I can see all my rice in here since I can't. Whoop. Sorry guys. I know I'm just I'm um I'm just an anal person when it comes to kind of that stuff. And I could leave it, but then I'm like I don't want to leave it in there. Okay, almost there. Um, you want to just get all that out. Oh, yes. Okay, I'll talk about the aprons um, when I get back and do my closing. I'm sorry I didn't do that at the beginning. Okay. So once it's completely done, completely melted, just turn off the fire. If you're on electric, take that bad boy off, okay? Don't want to keep it on there. We're going to put our six uh, tablespoons of butter, of warm butter, room temperature butter, should I say. This is a little bit more than six teaspoons. This is eight. Where's my knife? And it's going to bubble, should bubble anyways. Because your, uh, because your, what is that called? Caramel or your sugar is very, very high, okay? So, six tablespoons of room temperature. And it's gonna bubble like this. You are good. I'm just gonna stir that all in. Ooh. Um, it's supposed to be unsalted, but I only had salted, but oh. Gosh, don't do that. Oh my goodness, already it smells amazing. Can you guys see that the, the it's supposed to be unsalted. Um, I just have salted butter at home, so I'm not gonna add that extra salt to it, um, but you, but you can, okay? I just use, I always just use salted butter. I don't, I don't ever use unsalted butter. It's just a thing. I don't know why people use unsalted butter, but that's just my thing. It's type of my thing, my type of cooking. Ooh, it is good. So the fire is off. And then next we're going to add our half a cup of cream. And you want to make sure it's heavy whipping cream, okay? Anything else is too, too, um, too light. 
Is this half a cup? I don't know my own thing. Oh yeah, it is half a cup. Okay. Oh look, it's boiling, but that is okay. This is going to be crazy. Ooh, you can um, you can do so much things with this actually. Okay, and then you would put one teaspoon. Oh, my phone's gonna die. Gosh, one teaspoon of um, one teaspoon of salt if you would like. But I am fine because I use salted butter. So you want to keep this on the side. Is that all I was going to do today? Yes, that's all I'm going to do. And just let it kind of cool off for just a little bit. And then we can stick our, um, and you can use a wooden spoon if you would like, but I, I don't have wooden spoons here. Oh, my daughter is crying because she's upset because I am not getting her the crispy bird. Okay, so leave your um leave your apples inside of the icebox if you can, and then you can dip them. I just had them out and I didn't leave them in the icebox, but just FYI, leave them in the icebox until you're ready. Um, try to get the most round ones. My mom just bought the pack of apples, but you want to try to get them pretty round and then that they sit pretty evenly um, and then you can just have dipped dip your caramel in this look how look good this caramel is okay it is great and so if you did this in the multi-purpose pot you would just keep it at 150 until it's done actually and that and then you would know how how hot your thing is too because it has a temperature so we would just roll this I'm going to bring my 12 inch deep crustish closer. Oh, caramel. Oh, wash them. Try to get off all that wax for your apples before you, before you roll them in these. Okay. And you kind of want it to cool down a little bit before you start rolling your apples, but I just want to show you, um, all I kind of roll mines there. And then here's Ava to boop. I think she's coming. So if you wanted it to be a little bit thicker, you wouldn't add as much, as much um, heavy whipping cream. If you want it thinner, it is very, hi honey. It is very thin right now because it's very hot. But, and then if your apples are cold, of course, it would be a lot better too, right? But yeah, this is perfect for ice cream, um, on your brownie sundae, really anything. Here we go, guys. Here is our apples. If you, for Halloween, and if you want to put red food coloring to make it red, totally, um, totally optional. I don't do food colorings normally, so, um, but you can play with it. You can have black to make poison apples for hot for the holidays um really hi honey mommy's making us caramel apples really anything that you want to do she's right by my leg i don't know if you guys can see her i'm just gonna do this three that i have and then i'm going to jar the caramel after i get off the live and then i'll keep it um and it'll be good you can stick it in your ice box or whatever um, and then you can use it for your ice cream. Okay, here we go. Two. So see how it kind of leans? It's because my apples are not completely round and sits nicely on the thing, but it's fine. So how easy was it to make that caramel sauce? Um, very easy, just a few ingredients. And we got caramel apples for the kids for the holidays. Remember, you can stick your 
stick your um, food coloring in it to make it fun too. Or you can get nuts, you can uh, uh, sprinkles and make it fun like that too. So after you do caramel, you wanna do your sprinkles immediately after. Okay, I'm gonna bring you guys back to here because um, because I, it is quite hot over there. Yes, honey? Juice. You want juice. Okay, daddy can get you juice. Don't have too much though, okay? Oh, I forgot to do, oh look, I'm so red because it was so hot. Um, I forgot to do was, um, was actually, ooh. So before I, you, you don't want to put this on parchment paper because it will, the caramel will actually stick to the parchment paper. Um, you want to like, if you can, butter your uh, your dish. Um, I forgot to use my, my paper that the butter was in. Um, but you want to butter it and grease it so that it can just kind of pop off. But it's okay. You guys get the drip. But just a, a, a note for that. Yeah, I'm going to get our cookies right now. I didn't forget about them. cookies I think you could actually go a little bit longer to make them more crispy but they are done where's my spatula here's my spatula I love our salad master spatula and they should be oh yeah they're still gooey inside oh they need to cool I need a, my cooling rack but anyways um you could actually go there a little I want them like super crispy so I probably could keep, leave them in there for another three minutes, three, five minutes, and then it would be like burnt because I like <laughs> burnt cookies. <laughs> but these are still gooey inside and they're wonderful cookies. Um, I think once they completely cool, they'll be a little bit crispier too. But anyways, that is actually my pot. My, my thing isn't really hot. But anyways, here's my cookies, chocolate chip cookies. We are going to have this with some of, we're just having desserts tonight for dinner, huh? With our latte. How about I make some for my husband and then he can try. Huh, babe, do you want to try this? Yeah. Pumpkin latte? Okay, I want to have my husband try it. Just put it in some of one of this. Um, it's not hot any well, I don't know if it's it's probably just warm. And then you can put your your whip, your uh, cool whip or whatever and tie that. Here you go, you wanna try this? Here. So you can see, so I can tell people. Okay, so when your lid is on there pretty tight, you just wanna lift up your little valve here to releases. Here is our pumpkin. Pumpkin. Pumpkin he said pumpkin. -y. Here is our pumpkin and then it's ready to be mashed. And this is how you can do make for baby food, guys. Actually, I would do it on number 1 so it's a little bit easier. I um I read that this one shouldn't it shouldn't harden too much in the refrigerator like regular like how you buy them in the jar. It, it gets hard, but you, um, but not like where it's like hard, hard. I don't know how to explain that, but it's kind of just like how store-bought kind. Um, it'll harden, but it won't be too hard. Of course, if you leave it out or warm it up, um, it would be, it would be um, so softer. So it's the same concept as the store-bought one, if that makes sense, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, any questions, guys? Because um, I am done. That was a long live. I feel like five, uh, an hour. Sorry. It's quite a long live. I was trying to make it short, but there was just so much things that I wanted to do um, and showcase tonight. But everything... I don't have the recipes posted because um, 
yeah, I, I looked these up at like three o'clock in the morning last night. Um, I mean, yeah, three o'clock in the morning this morning um, when I was up because, you know, I'm up at like, yeah, crazy hours. Um, so I actually have written it all out in here. I will post it for you guys how to do it um, on my page. And then two, I've been posting everything on the YouTube channel so that you can rewatch on the YouTube channel and then I'll post the recipe on there too. So after this, um, I normally post it like tomorrow. Sometimes it takes a little while to upload, but um, I do, I do post it or try to anyways. Okay. Um, and that is it. Do we have any other questions? Oh, it's funny because my mom was like, I, um, do you need help? I'm like, oh, I think I got it. <laughs> I just did too much. I just did so much today. Okay. Okay. Oh, I want to show you guys my aprons. Aprons. Oh, and then, and then I got to show the sewing machine. Okay. So this is our aprons. Um, so my mom, can you, uh, can you pull a winner? Mom. Um, I'm just going to do their aprons, do the salad machine, and then um, you can post about the winner. So salad, I mean apron, these are the only style that we have left. It's that bright, hot pink um, cooking for a cause. So we are cooking for a cause for this whole month, of course, October, Breast um, Cancer Awareness Month. And um, unfortunately, these ones don't, um, don't, don't have the adjustment on the top, but it... It does tie nicely over here and it has it has the pockets the two pockets right in the front here and I'm just gonna bring it up so it just says simply for health salad master cooking for a cause so two dollars of every apron goes to the cause we're donating so if you don't have yours to um, you can stop by the office I only have this bright pink one like I said and I think I only have about like 10 left. So, so if you don't got yours, definitely come down and support. Um, I want to bring over the salad machine so I can just showcase that a little bit. So the, there's five different blades. So Auntie Chris, if you are still on here, I want to just do this real quick for you. I didn't forget, surprisingly. Um, so there are five different blades. One, two, and three are gonna be that Julian cut. One, um, one I do like to use for my harder vegetables, like uh, your carrots and stuff, if you're gonna eat them raw, it, it does um, help with your chew chewing so much. Um, even with your baby food, I do all of that on my number one. The only thing is like onions, unless you want onion juice. Um, but you really need to play with your blades, just FYI. Two, it's in the sink, sorry, but that's what I used for, um, that's what I used for our pumpkins, our pumpkin shreds, I'll show you one more time. Here we go in there so it's a, it's a little bit bigger um i would use that like i would um kind of what is that word i'm trying to look um, i can't think of the word but it, it's like that it's like the hash brown size um i can't think of the word sorry <laughs> so the hash brown size and then we got um so small shred uh then you got your three is more of that uh french fry french fry the four is gonna be your slicer, that nice slice. And then a five is gonna be that wave crinkle cut. So that waffle kind of cut there. I think it's not, is that waffle? Oh, wave, wave cut. So I just do it kind of like lace potatoes. So the wavy lace potatoes, that's kind of that, what that number five is gonna be. Um, was there, so if you do, if inside, <clears throat> Um, inside of the salad machine box, there was a there was a uh, booklet, and actually in the booklet it shows you the blades. Um, uh, a lot of times you need to play with what you play with it to kind of understand or get the size that you kind of want. 
um, but we do have extra booklets and then um, Auntie Chris, uh, if you want, I can grab you one um, and I can, when you come over on Saturday, I can give it to you if you need that booklet. Um, but it kind of just goes a little overlay on top of it. Um, there's lots of rest, Salamaster recipes, salamaster.com, YouTube. A lot of them show you which blade that they use. Um, the best thing I think is just playing with your blades. Um, the harder that you push down, of course, it's going to be thicker and the lighter that you push down is going to be thinner. The blades are very, very sharp. Um, I know at the beginning when you, I, I cut myself twice and then I've never done that before, uh, after, but they are very, very sharp. Um, you, a lot of people when they're using on the outside and I see, and a lot of people see us use our blade, our salad machine with the product or the vegetable on the outside. Um, once it gets closer to the end, if you're feeling uncomfortable, you can always use your hopper and use this as a guide to push down. Just make sure that you're not over pushing this plastic because your blades will eat into it. Um, and then you'll get plastic in your food and that's, yeah. And I can tell who's doing that to their, their guards. Um, but that's all a replaceable too, um, at a cost, of course. But yes, we have extra booklets if anyone needs um, or um, or if they would like, yeah. Okay, so I hope that helped a little bit. It was that everything um, with that. If you need more help, definitely let me know. I can do more on that for you guys. They're all dishwasher safe. Um, and the blades are quite sharp, uh, sharp. I've never had to sharpen them. We've had our salad machine for years, years, years. My mom's had her, hers one at her house for over 10, 10, 12 years maybe. It's a great host gift, uh, um, host reward. If you were looking to book um, and have us cook for you guys. Uh, this is one. We got our five quart walk. That's another host reward. And then our cutlery set. This month is a 4.5 quart mini brazier. I'll get that out for you guys. That is a limited edition. So whatever we have in stock is that that's it. Um, this is the, the last piece to the, is this it? Oh, I'm sorry. This is my 10 inch deep skillet. It looks like this one though. Um, uh, okay, yeah, just make believe. Um, it is the last piece of the gourmet, complete gourmet collection of that 24 karat gold inlay on the knobs and on the handles. Um, sorry, this is a 10 inch one. We don't have this one anymore. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so it's a little bit bigger. Here's our 4.5 quart mini brazier here. It's a beautiful piece. So this is also a, a, uh, a host reward gift for this month. So we are doing um, demonstrations either virtually in the, dem in the office or, um, or in your home. So mom's been going um, and she's been traveling. Kona side, why Mia? She's mostly on the road, but um, yeah, we are still we're doing virtual too. If you have people that are not comfortable leaving their home right now uh, due to uh, COVID, that is always an option for us to do. Um, and the only thing about that is that they don't get to taste the story, but that's it's okay. It's totally fine. Um, it's still doable. And um, for this month, we were, mom was actually trying to do 30, 30, 30 dinners in 30 days. So she is still booking like crazy. So if you need, if you guys can help her out, that would be great. I need this thing. And I think that is everything that I want to say. So thank you for, jo oh, my mom, where's my mom? Did she, did she, uh, did she pick a winner? Mom. Oh, 
Oh, okay. She said, uh, Janelle. Janelle, if it's still on, please claim. Must be still on till the end of uh till the end of live. Okay, yeah. Sorry, Janelle. I see you. I see you responded. You're good. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Yeah, you guys did that already. I was too busy talking. Okay, congratulations, Janelle. Make sure that you go and pick up try uh make it uh make it to the office this week. We like to get uh push out whatever we're giving in the week if it's possible. So uh, congratulations and thank you all for joining me in my kitchen. I know this was a, a very long live. You'll find it up on our YouTube channel, Cooking with Simply for Health. Um, I've been posting our lives right after. Um, it takes a few, sometimes it takes a few days to post, but it is going up and then I do put our recipes on there. But if you have any questions on anything, just let us know. And it's really raw because it's com completely off of what I did in the live. Um, and then you can always share, share, share. That will help us out. And I'm going to go enjoy some of these cookies with some milk. <laughs> so thank you for joining. I will see you guys next week, Tuesday, um, with some, some more Halloween-inspired dishes. Um, see you at 5.30. Hawaii Standard Time right here on my page, Buvaya Yogi. Okay, I will see you guys later. Bye.